This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's SmackDown time. We have the Alienware 17 R4 over here, and we have the MSI Titan Pro. This is the GT73 VR version, not the 83 that's even more expensive and has a mechanical keyboard and all that sort of thing. So, two big laptops here. I could just about disappear behind them. How do you choose? You've decided already you don't want to go for one of those ultra portable little ones. You want uncompromising gaming power, portability, room to room, more than taking it everywhere you go. And the price is about the same sort of. We're going to get into that. First off, let's talk about where the Alienware excels. Now, beauty is in the behind the eye of the beholder and all that sort of thing. And the MSI certainly isn't ugly, you know, but the Alienware has a pretty cool look to it. And in part, that's because it's the slimmer laptop. It's pretty hard to make a slim yet very powerful gaming laptop, but that's what Alienware is set out to do here. So definitely a chic looking machine. And you know, when people talk about build quality and they say Alienware wins, I think they're really in this case, I mean, I know that I am talking about the looks of the machine, uh, the the beefy rigidness of it, and all that sort of thing. I mean, yes, you can twist the lid a little bit on it. That's that's not out of the ordinary. It's well put together, but so is the MSI. There's no misfitting creases. There's no terrible design cues on it. It's just a more traditional looking gaming laptop, and the bottom panel on it is plastic. So there's a little bit of flex on that. Whereas the Alienware has a very rigid subframe, so you're not going to feel any flex. When it comes to portability, some people think the Alienware is more portable. You know what? It really isn't. It's got the same size footprint. In fact, it's a little bit deeper front to back because of that rear fan hanging out the back. The only way it's more portable is in its thinness. The other dimensions are roughly the same, if not a little bit bigger on the Alienware. And in fact, it weighs more. It weighs 10 pounds versus 8.6 pounds for the MSI, which is about what? 0.66 kilograms, something like that. It's a significantly heavier machine, actually. So I would say that psychologically, the thinness might make you think it's more portable, but it's not. But looks, it's winning. And the Tron lights, as they call it, the, the light piping around the sides and all that sort of thing, somehow they managed to be tasteful with LEDs at Alienware. And it looks just really cool. And it actually has a functional purpose, I noticed, because I do spend a lot of time gaming in a fairly dark room. It helps you to see the ports on the side in the dark, because you've got inky black kind of sides on it, which is cool. Both of these have zone programmable RGB backlit keyboards on them. And Alienware does something a little bit different. They're not using the chiclet key style. It's a very nice keyboard to type on. I like it. The trackpad is one of the best I've used on a gaming laptop. It's, you know, Dell owns Alienware they have for about a decade now. So a lot of their design prowess shows in terms of making something that actually is usable like an everyday laptop. The trackpad is an example of that with those nice, soft, clickable, discrete buttons on it. Also, software. With Alienware, you feel like you have your, you're being mollycoddled, you're being taken care of the way you would be with a regular old laptop. You have a normal software update program there that pulls down your drivers as they're available, takes care of installing it for you, including BIOS updates, all that sort of thing. MSI kind of lets you do it yourself. <laughs> There's no program that really keeps track of updates for you on it. You actually have to visit their website every so often and look for those updates. You get facial recognition login also with the Alienware, which is something you don't get on the MSI. Again, it feels a little bit more like your traditional laptop. It has all those kind of creature comforts. The other thing is price, or not exactly price, because Alienware is not known for being inexpensive, are they? But the prices actually aren't bad for what you get. But it's the Dellification of Alienware in a way. You know, really, if you think about it, Alienware only makes one laptop and they just happen to offer it in three sizes, the Alienware 13, the 15, the 17. So they're doing it the way Dell does the Inspiron line, the same way. So they have a scale of manufacture that lets them actually do things pretty affordably and lets them offer quite a lot of different variations in terms of internal components you can order. So you can start at 1300 for an Alienware 17. But that's probably a configuration most people wouldn't choose if they're going to go for the Alienware. So that $1,300 Alienware with a GTX 1050 Ti and, you know, the, the, the specs aren't super duper exciting on that. It's about the same as you could get on an Inspiron Gamer, actually, but with a nicer display panel option to start with, that sort of thing. So it starts out cheaper. There's many different options. You can get the 1050 Ti, you can get a 1060, you can get a 1070, you can get a GTX 1080 on, you can get the i7 7700HQ or the 7820HK overclockable CPU. 
lots of different drive options, all that sort of thing, because this is the only 17 inch gaming laptop they make. So you have a versatility of how you can order it up and get it if you want to order it yourself from Dell's website versus picking one up off the shelf at a store. The other price advantage is that they have sales a lot at Dell. And also Best Buy carries them. And Best Buy seems to put the Alienwares on sale about once a month or so, so you can save a couple hundred bucks. So surprisingly, the Alienware can be the more budget friendly and is the more versatile in terms of getting it configured. With MSI, they make many different gaming laptop lines. The GT is the top of the line and the 73 that we're comparing with here, and the 83 is stratospherically expensive. So we're not really, so with MSI, they figure if you, if you want to go for less money and lesser graphics and all that sort of thing, you're going to pick one of their other lines, like the GT72 Dominator, for example, or the GE series, which is more affordable. So out now, top of the line components to start with the MSI and top of the line price. It starts around $2,000. There's no $1,300 option here because the lowest you can go is a GTX 1070 graphics card and a Core i7-7700 HQ processor. They also offer the 70 20 overclockable CPU, and you can get it with two <laughs> GTX 1070s and SLI or a GTX 1080, which is what we have in our review unit here. So yeah, top of the line stuff to start with. Both of these have a 7200 RPM hard drive and a boot SSD. Uh, typically MSI starts with a 256 gig SSD. Both of these are available with SATA on the low end or PCIe NVMe SSDs. Going along with the fact that, well, Dell has to offer several different options since they only have one, Alienware 17 R4. There's the base 1080p IPS display. There is the 2K display that we have here. This is the fast refresh. Basically, they came out with this display to compete with MSI because MSI was the first one on the block to have a 120 hertz fast refresh TN panel. And there's also a 4K option. So you got three different options there. The IPS 1080p display used to be pretty good on the Alienware 17, but the, with the second, with the refresh for KB Lake, it's not as exciting looking, unfortunately. The 2K panel now, I think they fixed the banding issue. It's a pretty nice looking display. Color gamut's average around 72% of Adobe RGB. It's not super duper color saturated. It's pretty bright though. It's not a bad display, but the, the standard display for the MSI is the 1080p display. Okay, so resolution wise, that one's not going to win there, but it has wonderful color gamut. It's a color saturation is excellent on this. We're talking 90% of Adobe RGB, so colors look much zingier. Brightness isn't as impressive though, it's about 270 nits. If you're playing indoors, that's okay. So I actually prefer the display on the MSI. Yeah, the resolution's not as high, but it's 17 inches, that's still okay with me. But boy, the colors and the contrast is higher too, which is important for gaming also. And MSI also has a high quality 4K display option. And both of these are available with G-Sync for those of you who care. When it comes to ports, hands down the MSI wins. It has a whole lot more ports. Uh, yeah. It's pretty odd that the Alienware, being uh, still a large gaming laptop, has only two USB ports. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you've got DisplayPort, you've got HDMI, you've got Ethernet, you've got many USB ports, and you have Thunderbolt 3, and you have four audio jacks on the MSI. So it's it's the hands down winner. Oh, an SD card slot too. But the Alienware does not have an SD card slot. So it's a little on the port constrained side. It does have Thunderbolt 3 as well, which is good to see. So both of these have that full four lane PCIe, PCIe lanes on there. And one thing that's a plus for the Alienware is it has their graphics amplifier connector. Why is that good? I mean, you could just get a Razer Core or something else. And sure, you could do that. But the graphics amplifier is typically cheaper, $199 to $250 for the box versus around $500 bucks for a Razer Core. So there you have it. Another victim of the thinification on the Alienware, besides the loss of um, ports you would normally expect to see on a laptop this big, is if you take the bottom off, you get access to the, the easy upgrade components. To the RAM slots, there's two RAM slots versus four on the MSI. We'll talk a little more about that. But And your hard drive and your SSDs. But if you want to take it further apart, so you want to clean the fans or you want to repeat, repaste the CPU and GPU, you, there's a sub-panel, a subframe that you have to take off as well. And then taking off the heatsink either involves removing the motherboard completely or you could just take apart the fan shrouds. If all that sounds terrifying to you, well, you get the idea. With the MSI, five screws pop off the bottom. You have access to absolutely everything. The heat sinks, it's easy to take off if you want to clean it, all that sort of thing. So it's a much more maintainable and easy to upgrade laptop. 
Heat is also another issue from the thinification. Alienware has gotten a reputation for running notoriously hot, the CPU core temperatures and the GPU. Now, if you're getting a lower end configuration, Alienware, a GTX 1060, even a 1070, and just a Core i7-7700HQ, you're not overclocking that CPU. The temperatures are okay. They're a little on the high side, maybe for a large gaming laptop, but mm, core temperature is 75 to 85 centigrade. The GPU temperatures aren't a problem. Part of that may be the tripod heatsink design for that CPU, three screws holding it down rather than four, not as even pressure. Who knows? It's been analyzed to death as to what could be improved possibly for the, the heatsink design for the Alienware. And a lot of you have gone out there and repasted it. And I, if you repaste it, it does get better. I've done that. And I dropped about seven degrees on my core temperatures, which is great. But the caveat is it's a <clears throat> pain to take it apart and actually to do that. It's beyond what a lot of people probably want to do to actually take it apart down to the motherboard to do that repasting. The MSI, on the other hand, has enormous cooling capacity. The, the heatsink design on this is phenomenal. Even the SSDs have a huge heatsink plate with fins on I've never seen before. You've, you've just got a worry-free machine here in terms of thermals. I haven't even thought about repacing this because typically when playing today's modern games like Battlefield 1, the CPUs are like running at 65 to 68 on the core temperatures. That's with the i7700 HQ. Now, if you've got the overclockable one, you're going to see about five degrees higher for those core temperatures. That's still phenomenally good. And of course, the GPU, again, hasn't been a problem for cooling on either of these machines. GPU temperatures are quite good. Around 75 with the GTX 1080, and I would expect about 5 to 10 degrees lower if you have the GTX 1070 model of it. So turnkey, easier to paste if you need to, runs cooler, you don't need to. That's the MSI. The, the Alienware is going to be sort of like your tunable hot rod. You're probably going to have to mod it and paste it and all that sort of thing to get it to run cool. Unsurprisingly, the fan noise is a lot louder on the Alienware as a result. They have very high CFM fans. It moves a lot of air. Uh, but they are smaller and they are running at higher speeds. So it's annoying enough that even wearing standard headphones, not noise canceling ones, I hear the fan noise when I'm gaming to a degree that's distracting. So noise canceling headphones, you definitely want that even after repasting. The MSI moves a large volume of air and you can tell that it's doing that, but it's not distracting and I can't hear it through standard headphones. So gaming performance, well, apples to apples, if you've got the same configuration, you're looking at pretty much the same performance. They're both very strong performing machines. That's, <laughs> that's not in doubt here. I have noticed after playing for about an hour, again, on demanding games like Battlefield 1 or Mass Effect, Andromeda, Overwatch, that sort of thing, the frame rates will drop a bit on the Alienware and they don't on the MSI. I mean about five frames or so, but that isn't unusual for gaming laptops as the heat builds up. Um, so not a huge deal breaker there. So I'm both good performers. In the end, I think you can tell that despite the fact that I really love the way the Alienware looks and, and the, the, the rigidity of the body and all that sort of thing, I pick the MSI in this case for the fact that it's much cooler running, it's turnkey, it's easy to open up if you need to, and that 120 hertz display, the color gamut and the contrast on that just blah, blah, blah. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.